The temperatures outside may be dropping, but we're gonna keep your worm bin humming throughout the winter. We're gonna cover that on today's episode of Coffee and Compost. My name is Steve Churchill, and I own the Urban Worm Company. So if you're like lots of vermicomposters, you probably started vermicomposting when the temperatures were climbing during the spring. You know, the, the, the grass starts growing, things start getting greened up, and you start thinking about gardening, and then that's when you start thinking about vermicomposting. But at this point in the year, it's currently the middle of November, actually towards the end of November, temperatures are dropping, and now we gotta figure out how are we gonna keep our warm bins going throughout the winter. I've got a few tips here today that I think you're really gonna like, and it's gonna keep your warm bin at least surviving, if not thriving, during these cold winter months. Now, my first tip is just to move to San Diego. You can do it in the winter, you can do it in the summer. Problem is, you probably can't afford it, and neither can I, so let's just uh, throw that one out the window. The next one is a little bit of a throwaway, too, because you probably already thought about it. If you can bring your worm bin indoors, this is the best solution. Simply put, if you can keep your worms in the same temperature where you're comfortable, your worms are gonna be comfortable. And that range is gonna be between 55 and 90 degrees. And if you live in Philadelphia area like I do or anywhere up north, you're not gonna have 55 degrees of an ambient temperature throughout the winter. So if you can move those worms indoors, beg your wife, your husband, your roommate, uh, your kids, please let me bring these things inside. It's going to go much better. If you're doing vermicomposting correctly, you shouldn't have the fruit flies and the smell that people often associate with, with some worm bins or composting in general. If this is an option, please just go ahead and do that and then you can stop watching this video. Don't stop watching this video though because I'm going to get to some other good tips. If you can't bring your worm bin indoors, then do the next best thing and put it somewhere outdoors that is still covered. And preferably if that outdoor location can be in say a garage or some place where it shares a wall with your home. Your home is gonna radiate a certain amount of heat. And uh, if, if your home's like mine, your insulation's not so good, it's probably gonna radiate a lot of heat. So a uh, place like a garage, even an unheated garage, but, but on an interior wall will be a big help. If you're one of those weirdos that actually parks your car in your garage, then your garage really isn't totally unheated. Uh, there's some anecdotal evidence that I've seen that suggests that unheated garages are still 10 to 20 degrees warmer than the ambient air temperature. And that's due to both the heat that it draws from the home and the heat that it draws from your, your car's engine as it cools. It's just gonna radiate that heat and it's gonna provide you a little bit of warmth that you're gonna need through the winter. If your warm bin can't be in a garage or can't be inside and it totally has to be outside, then there's another little thing we can do and that is to overfeed. That is gonna actually produce some uh, microbial activity, uh, very much like you would see for hot composting. We're gonna try to get a little bit of that going in a worm bin. The thing we found when we fed our commercial worm bin is that our temperatures increased for about two to three days. I think you would see this too with a regular worm bin where once you feed it, you're gonna boost that microbial activity a little bit. You're providing a lot of that food. You may even start getting a little bit of that thermophilic heat loving composting going on. Uh, you don't wanna overdo this obviously because you don't wanna actually start cooking your worms or creating a mess, but a little bit of overfeeding may do your worms good to keep them warm. The next thing we can try is to use something called thermal mass. And so I just wanna harken back to a military analogy which says that uh, quantity has a quality all its own. And so when you have a lot of quantity, uh, what that gives you is thermal mass. And the way we're gonna get that quantity is to A, have a large worm bin, and B, try to keep that worm bin as full as possible. An increased volume gives us an increased thermal mass, which is an increased ability for your vermicompost, in this case, to store and release heat. So you're gonna, your, your uh, outdoor temperatures may fluctuate. It's gonna have a low, it's gonna have a high, it's gonna go back to a low. What's gonna happen is instead of your worm bin temperature doing this, it's gonna do more like this because it's not going to fully fluctuate uh, to those low uh, temperatures or necessarily to the high ones. So a nice full worm bin gives us that thermal mass that helps you withstand those shorter periods of extreme temperatures. One thing you could do, and this is a great time of year to do it, is to create a hot compost pile and to simply add worms to it. Now, this is a little bit difficult. It's a little bit of work. You're gonna have to take those leaves. You're gonna have to shred them. You're gonna have to take pumpkins or uh, any other sort of nitrogen source, and you're gonna have to create a hot compost pile. But that's one way that my friend Bentley Christie of Red Worm Composting will keep 
his worms going through the winter. He lives in a suburban area. He does it in his backyard, and it's kind of a nice little project for him where every year he, he just piles up this organic matter. He gets it hot on purpose. He inoculates it with all of his worms, and the worms are really good at finding the areas of a hot compost pile where they're happiest. The good thing about a hot pile is that it's not going to be hot everywhere. The outer edges are going to be cold, uh, the inner edges may be, may be hot, um, but the worms are going to be really good at finding that, that kind of happy spot where they are. So if you are doing hot composting already and you're trying to keep a worm bin alive outdoors, go ahead and maybe use those worms in your hot compost pile. Now, the other issue there is that during the spring, you're, if you want to extract the worms, you're going to have to screen them out of there and then maybe start up a new worm bin. But this is a way to keep your vermicomposting going throughout the winter. Now, a lot of the methods I've talked about so far are kind of how to use nature to keep your worm bin warm over the winter. But here is a little bit of a man-made cheat code that I'm currently using in my urban worm bag downstairs to keep my worms at about 70 degrees. And it's working really well and it's going to work well all the way throughout the winter. I use a product called a seed starting mat. This particular one is made by Vivo Sun, and there's a bundle that you can buy with it where you get uh, a thermostat that comes along with it. What normally happens is with a seed starting mat, it's going to do a good job of keeping a surface that's about 20 degrees uh, Fahrenheit warmer than ambient temperature. In this case, if you have the thermostat, then you can actually control the temperature uh, using this sensor probe that you can put into your material. We're going to take that probe, we're going to stick it just below the surface of our vermicompost. Uh, we don't want to put it too far down or else you risk drying out the top of your, uh, your vermicompost, and we certainly don't want to do that. Uh, but you're going to take that probe, put it just under the surface of your vermicompost. You're going to lay the seed starting mat right on top of it. I also lay an urban worm blanket on top of it, close it up, and I set the thermostat for 72 degrees and I forget about it. So it's about 32 degrees here in the Philadelphia area. It's probably going to get up to about 45 today, maybe 50. But my worm bin is going to be at a nice steady 72 degrees. It's not going to get dried out by the heat and it's going to keep working really well. It doesn't draw that much uh, electrical power either. It's really providing a very low level amount of heat. So it's just heating just enough to keep the surface at about 72 degrees for me. So I really like this option. I think it's gonna work great for you. Vivo Sun makes a lot of different sizes of these. We actually use larger versions of these in our Michigan Soil Works continuous flow system. And it works, it works great for us too there as well. Uh, so in the, in the uh, sh uh, episode description, I'm going to have uh, a link to uh, where you can go buy that on Amazon. And, and I would check out Vivo Sun's products. If you're not using the Urban Worm Bag or if the 20 by 20 inch doesn't quite work well for you, look at some of the other ones and uh, you may find one that works better for you in your situation. <laughs> Hey guys, it's Steve from a few days later. I totally forgot to talk to you about insulation. Uh, when you are insulating your vermicompost or your worm bin, what you're doing is you're creating pockets of air. You're essentially creating layers and layers of air uh, around what it, whatever it is that you wanna, that you wanna insulate. Uh, if you are vermicomposting outdoors in an urban worm bag or a Worm Factory 360 or Hungry Bin, one of the, the freestanding worm bin, then you're gonna to wanna to go ahead and insulate the bin itself. I would wrap something around it, whether it's blankets, maybe insulation, you might even think about creating a frame for it and then insulating that frame. For something like the Urban Worm Bag, it might be great just to actually just wrap things around the frame that, that exists already. If you are doing vermicomposting on the ground, uh, say in a windrow or in something like a sub pod, then what you want to do is insulate the top of it and insulate the sides of it the best that you can. So I hope that this helps. Don't forget to insulate. If anything else doesn't work for you on this, you can always try insulation. It can't hurt. It can only help. See ya. So let's just recap here uh, what we were talking about in terms of keeping your worm bin warm. That would be A, move to San Diego. B, move your worm, bin, your worm bin inside. If it can't be outside, move it into an unheated garage or something that maybe shares a wall with your home. Uh, we wanna add microbial activity through adding a lot more food. We wanna keep your worm bin nice and full. We maybe wanna think about doing hot composting outdoors and then adding worms to the pile to keep your vermicomposting going over the winter or we're just gonna go with a nuclear option, do that seed starting mat and keep, your, keep the surface of your vermicompost nice and warm. And don't forget insulation. I wanna let you know that I've got a guide for you that I think is really gonna be helpful. It is uh, six uh, rookie mistakes that everyone makes 
Uh, over the years, I've noticed that most people are making the same few mistakes with their worm bins and it's causing all the same problems. And so I created a handy little guide. It's fun to read. If you click this link over my left shoulder, you're going to be taken to a, a landing page where you can uh, enter your email. I'm going to give you that uh, guide immediately and we'll go from there. I'd love to hear what you think of it. That's it for today, guys. We'll see you on the next episode of Coffee and Compost.